do you have any like crazy pet stories? Yeah. Um, my mom, yeah, my mom was like super into pets. Like we always had like pets growing up. Oh God. Like I literally just remembered like this one story. So like, okay. When I was seven, we moved to Mississippi and we had this like orange tabby cat and he was awesome. His name is Figaro, which I still to this day think it's the best name That's ever. Such for a cool name. Right. Figaro is such a cool name. I don't know who came up with it, but whoever did. But, um, <laughs> Um, so we had this cat named Figaro and we moved and we had another cat named Duchess and she was just like a white, lazy, fat cat. Like, do you know, she was, she was She sounds like a Duchess. Yeah, like literally (laughs) she was. And we moved out into, my mom owned seven acres of land at that time. And so we literally lived in the middle of the woods in in Mississippi, which was cool as a kid because I literally grew up building forts in the woods, playing in the dirt, like running around. We had like a four wheeler and stuff and a go-kart. Um, and that's why you're so good in the outdoors. Yeah. When we went camping, Melanie's like on it. Yeah. Like we, like, I know it's bad for the planet. My mom didn't know at the time, but we burned our trash. Like, do you know what I mean? That's like, we didn't have garbage. Like we lived so far out, like garbage, like trucks and stuff like didn't come out of there. Like, so it was just like, I know now, now I'm like, okay, that's so bad. Like we're we're the reason. (laughs) Literally that's what kind of, yeah. makes me think of my childhood. I'm like things that we would never do yeah yeah exactly that's what it's like we're so awake now to like the environment but like yeah so we had this cat named Figaro and because he was growing up in the woods he was ripped he was like this super muscular cat like was just an absolute boss and just like the best cat ever and we um like I remember I literally remember this my mom shouting at him and being like we have mouse in the, and mice in the house. Like, what are you good for? Blah, 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 blah. Like really going out and like threw him out and like locked the door. Didn't let him in for the rest of the night. Woke up in the morning. I remember like my mom being like, come and see. Woke up in the morning. He was like at the door and he had three dead mice waiting at the door for us. It was like, I killed them all. Best cat ever. Like, wow. Yeah. So he was super smart. But unfortunately, we moved to we moved back to New Orleans, which I mean, I liked I liked when we lived in New Orleans. And the first week that we moved back, obviously, he was so used to being in the country without any cars. The first week that we got back, he got hit by a car and right in front of our house, which was so sad because he was literally like our like cat and we had just like lost our dog like my mom had a dog named max and when we lived in mississippi we think someone stole him he was very well trained and so my mom still to this day is heartbroken over that like lab like that dog like she had him so trained so like people love to steal dogs yeah especially if they're like obviously like if you put that effort in and and train them yeah i would never steal a dog it's nuts but um yeah so he got hit by a car And he was actually my brother's cat. And my mom's so savage as well. She was quite an an intense person. Like, Mm. she was quite, like, shouty. And, like, like, yeah, when she would discipline us, she was very, very physical. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. And she, like, was obviously upset that the cat was dead. And... Made my Wait, brother. Upset, as in, was it? Was she upset because? Okay, no, no, no the, go for the it. The cat got hit by a car, basically. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, shouted at my brother. It was like, "It's your cat. You bury him." And I just feel like, as a parent, and being a parent now, like I would never do that. I would want to take care of it for my kids. Like that's so traumatizing. I know. And so I remember because my brother was crying. Like I'd never seen my brother cry. He was like seven years older than me. He was maybe fourteen at the time, and he, we were staring at. He, the cat was like in a garbage bag like wrapped up and then we oh were just God. staring at like the hole that we were gonna have to dig like the place and it was like f- like it was so dramatic it was like raining outside and my brother was crying and I was just standing next to him because I felt like I needed to be supportive like be there I didn't want him burying a cat by himself <laughs> the fuck? he gets super fucking angry obviously because he's having to bury his cat Aww kicks the shovel oh my god i thought you were gonna say kicks the cat <laughs> no <laughs> well, fine had to get it off the roof no <laughs> no kicks the shovel the shovel like flips in the air and comes straight down like pointy edge down into my foot i'm a like eight-year-old child like do you know what i mean like right digs <laughs> and thankfully put- your foot is still intact yeah literally i had a scar like i like probably used to have a scar but like it like dug straight up into my skin i immediately started screaming and crying and like it was like bleeding everywhere and my mom runs out and, he- and she cries she was like what the fuck did you do, Matthew? And 
my ma- my brother was like, I didn't mean to, I didn't want that to happen. It was like, it was so dramatic. And I was so hurt. Like, you know, my foot was in pain that I couldn't say like, mom, it was an accident. Cause I was like, <laughs> like, yeah. So that was like, oh my God, that's a crazy proper story. dramatic. And I told my brother about this not too long ago, like, and he doesn't remember, which is like, probably, he probably just like deleted it. Cause it was so dramatic. Yeah. And I'm guessing he finished the job after as well. Like, oh my god, I know. that's so traumatic. Poor, poor babe. I cannot imagine that. I know, mom. Literally... What are you thinking? <laughs> oh my god, go I... and bury your cat. It's I your know. cat. What? <laughs> well, thing is, like that just made me think. I had some hamsters, and then so when I was with my dad, I had the hamsters, and then I moved in with my auntie, and I would go over every weekend. Yeah. And then one of the weekends, I came home, and I was like, "Where's where are the hamsters?" <laughs> and my dad was like. They were shagging too much. There was too many of them. And I was like, okay, so what happened? And yeah. he was like, Where are they? He was like, we gave half to the pet shop. Oh my God, half. <laughs> and then Not he many. said the rest died. So he just binned them. And I was like, <laughs> you could have just pretended like you buried them. I like, know. especially going to bringing you to church all the time. And like, <laughs> I know. And he fucking binned them. Like, literally. Garbage hamster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was like, all right. Okay, that's what we do when things die. <laughs> yeah. Just bin it. <laughs> Put it in the bin. Yeah. yeah, so that was quite sad. I remember that. That was yeah. not being very nice. But <laughs> Was your dad quite savage with animals then? Or um, like, was he like very empathetic or not at no. all? No. <laughs> oh my God, not at all. Yeah. Um, so we we had a few cats. We We had one dog and like the dog didn't really last that long with us. It was maybe like... Your dad bent um, him as well. Oh my <laughs> god, imagine. <laughs> Actually, that dog was a nightmare. Yeah. My dad randomly brought him home because his boss got a dog and couldn't look after him. And yeah. It was a Labrador, and Labradors are crazy. Yeah, like, if they're not trained, puppies. yeah. And like, it would only listen to my dad. So it would just, whenever my dad was at work, the dog would like open all the cupboards, eat no. rice, and then shit everywhere. No. Was your mom there as well? Yeah, but my, oh my mom God. did not, couldn't control the dog. Yeah. So we had to give him away. And then we had, we bought a house and we had this like really cute cat. And then um, she was like this Siamese cat. Actually, mm. she was not cute. She scratched the shit out of me, <laughs> but I loved her. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that was my love for cats. And yeah. then basically my auntie, she also had a cat and then they had to give the cat to us yeah but my dad was like we already have a cat so yeah. this cat is gonna have to live outside and i felt really bad because it was a beautiful persian yeah. fluffy white cat oh like my God. she was a princess and yeah. she had to live outside and in bulgaria there's a lot of stray cats yeah so basically um the so that cat, the white one, she was just running around outside. And then I look over and I'm like, oh my God, there's another cat raping her. Oh no. And they were quite high up. Like you couldn't really get to them. Yeah. So all I could do was really like just shout. Was and... she like screaming or something? Yeah. Like, yeah how yeah. did you know? <laughs> yeah. I think she was making a sound and I was like, she's yeah, getting which, raped. Which to, to be fair though, it is really common in like cat kind of like culture, cat culture that like literally I watched that like document with David Attenborough and they were like, this is really common. And it was like these two boy cats had like raped this other like female, like cat, like big cat. Um, so she would protect her babies basically. So she had to basically let them. It was, I started crying when I watched it. Like, That's, um, yeah. So it is very like common. common, which is quite sad. Well, I started screaming and I was like, you know, trying to, I was trying to make noise to get him to get off of her, but yeah. he wouldn't. So I shouted for my dad Yeah. and my dad got his rifle. <laughs> get your gun. Yeah. He got his fucking gun and he literally was like, he got his crazy Arab eyes out. Like they popped up and he was like, hey. And then the, the cat kind of like gave him a bit more attention yeah. and then he shot at it. Oh. And it ran, like it just sprinted. Oh my God. And and I was like... Did you see the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I watched God. the whole thing. What did you do? Were you like... I was just like, that's my dad. Yeah. Like, Oh, that's my dad. No, because literally my dad was so crazy when I was growing up. Like yeah. he would do the weirdest shit. Like we would go to McDonald's and he would bring his own bread. And everybody... <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that's so weird. <laughs> He 
here's my bread. No, and literally he would tell them to make his food in the bread. And I was always so embarrassed. I was like, oh. what the fuck, dad? Like, yeah. please stop. <laughs> Just little shit like that. Yeah. So I was like, just another thing my dad's done. Like, you know. <laughs> just shooting the cat. Yeah, <laughs> just shooting the fucking cat. So then a bit of time passes by and I, I was actually really good friends with the neighbor. He was like yeah. an older guy. He was an artist. And like, we would always go over to his place to just hang out. He was a yeah. really nice man. And turns out it was actually his cat. Mm-hmm. So one of the days, like, he just comes <laughs> up to us and he was like, my fucking neighbor shot my cat. <laughs> was your dad there? No, no, he's saying this to my dad. Oh my God. And my dad goes, what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. What a fucking, like, your dad's awesome. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to bring my own bread to McDonald's now. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, fuck keep your mouth shut now yeah and imagine then, if you were just like no actually my dad <laughs> imagine Smack. yeah no my nah you would never yeah. like open your mouth in front of my dad yeah. like, <laughs> and, <that's so> <laughs> and then literally i saw the cat and it like half of its head was like basically gone it was still alive and still functioning but it didn't have an ear and it was like very bloody and disgusting oh that's horrible well, that's what happens when you I rape get, a cat. Yeah, literally. But I mean, like... <laughs> but at least no, the cat yeah. survived. At least they didn't die. Like, no, you know really, what I mean? Imagine. And I was like, my dad is such a good shot. Like, yeah. he managed to get a moving cat. Yeah. Uh, you know, cats are so Pew. freaking fast. Yeah. And he managed to shoot it in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressed. That's, that's crazy. No, I'm not condoning it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I but I'm still yeah. impressed. Yeah, that's crazy. My Do God. you have any crazy stories like that? Like, come on, I've, you need to beat this one. <laughs> I actually have a story um, that someone told me, and this is like a real story that happened to them. And basically, they lived out in the country in America, and one of their like cousins or something basically was like, "Oh, we've got this random dog that we've found, kind of thing. But now we have to go away, like kind of thing. Can you look after it?" And they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll look after it. Keeping in mind that this person had dogs of their own as well. And are like, basically just like they were living out their day kind of like, you know, and they hear like all this noise like out, outside and they run outside and they see that the the strange dog was literally attacking her like really super, super lovely like dog, like super lovely, super kind. Like I had met the dog before. This dog was like stupid as stupid as fuck, but like lovable. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And the other <laughs> stupid, as stupid fuck. yeah, that's what I mean. Like just like stupid, but like so cute and like, you know, silly. And the other dog, like the strange kind of stray dog, literally had the the like lovely dog, like its neck and its mouth and had like locked jaw proper on. And the person like ran out and tried to like obviously get the dog off, but the dog had like locked jaw and wouldn't let go of like their dog. And so they run like and try to find like little BBs for like a BB gun or a gun because obviously it's America, just like your dad did. Like, you know, you're trying to like actually save your dog's mm-hmm. life. Like it's that moment and it's like, what do you do? And she like couldn't find any bullets for the gun and basically like decides like this is a moment where either I'm gonna have it's to either watch, my dog or Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch my dog die. Like, be killed by this strange dog, or I'm gonna have to decide to kill this other dog. Like, you know, because they're not gonna stop until my dog is dead. Mm. So, like, they basically grab a knife from the kitchen and literally stab the other dog. And, and it didn't even, like, like basically die straight away because like obviously like you have to stab it in a certain place and they were like oh, oh my god then i had to see where the lungs would be and stab it in there so it would like <gasps> yeah and they weren't saying this as a like oh look what i did like when they told me the story they were crying crying their eyes out be like i didn't want to have to do that but it, they were killing my dog what do i do there wasn't anyone it wasn't a neighborhood that could help you that's like if a dog like was had locked out like obviously children and other dogs are different but that was her baby in mm. a sense like you know and it's like but it's just crazy 